Hey, this is Bond Diesel, and today I am bringing you another Intel Insights video. This time we will be doing the Dark Zone recordings. I did say I was going to do these in alphabetical order. The contaminated areas recordings are kind of weird how they're set up, so I'm going to do those another time. Uh, so this time we're going to do uh, the Dark Zone recording. So we'll listen to them. Uh, I'll talk briefly about what I think they mean to the story of the game, maybe the future of the game, and uh, we'll go from there. But first, we'll listen to all of them, and I will come back to you shortly. The mission is simple. Protect the station grounds and contents. Not hard work, either. Even the most determined looter gets scared off by the kind of firepower we're packing. So that's easy. But the hard part is just standing here not doing anything as we watch the city go to hell. I know there's units out there in the streets. I know the doctors at the Sierra Hospital are doing their best. And in the meantime, we stand here and guard trains full of crap that might never get used. Mm. Dear me, the wall. It was that nice Mr. Tran fellow who suggested it, and you know how he was. God rest his soul. If he got his hands on a project, it was going to get done, and that was that. And so we got a wall. At first, it was just wire and barricades. But even as the last ones of those were going up, the concrete was being poured for the real wall. And it all went up so fast. It was like someone had already planned it. Let me get one thing straight. I know Victor. I like Victor. But what Victor is doing is unconscionable. I can understand wanting to safeguard the community. Hell, I could even applaud him for that. But the tactics he's using, flushing anyone who might be sick out of Georgetown, walling us off so that the infected refugees don't get in, they're inhumane. And the worst part is, there's dozens of folks who agree with me who won't stand up to Victor. They're too afraid of getting called out or exiled too. I don't know what I can do. Pull out! I repeat, pull out! The DC-62 is toxic! We've got whole teams down! We need to stop spraying and get people out of here! I don't care what that asshole trance says! So, it was another double shift today. That makes four days running in seven out of eight. And I gotta ask, what is such a big deal that they're bringing in all these supplies? We're talking food, we're talking medical supplies, we're talking military gear, and we're talking one metric fuck ton of that yellow powder stuff, the DC-62. I hear that didn't work so good in Georgetown, and if it didn't work so good there, you know, I gotta wonder, why are they shipping it here? Maybe they don't got anywhere else to put it. I don't know, but I'd feel a whole heck of a lot safer if they were shipping it someplace else. Look, I don't care that we don't have a final destination set up for them. They can't stay here or they're dead. So, I want the wards evacuated in an orderly fashion. Don't give me any back talk. All it will take is one change in the wind and we'll be knee deep in DC-62. So, get moving! Oh, that Shay. She was a firecracker. Kept fighting, fighting, trying to get people what they needed. <laughs> Stared down a couple of guards one time and took a crate of meds right from them. I tell you, they just stood there, let her take them. Because you just did not get in that young woman's way. Gotta tell you, I've seen something I don't like. We're here to protect these people, right? Make sure they've got a place to stay since they don't have a place in the city. But the longer this goes on, the more this place feels like a prison and where are the guards? Seeing people getting beaten for asking perfectly sensible questions. How far is this gonna go? And how far can I go along with it? We were stationed in the supply camp when the rain started, and... Well... It just didn't stop. Which was fine. Except the drains backed up. And all this DC-62 stuff floated out on top of the water. Yes, I'm sure it was DC-62. As soon as I saw it, I notified the duty officer. No, I didn't stick around to examine it closely. The first thing you've got to understand is the rich are different. They want something, by God, they're going to get it no matter what. So, when word came down they were looking for a test bed for DC-62, some of the rich folks got it in their heads that they wanted it first. Which is why I'm here, 
In Georgetown, setting up the blowers so we can coat entire houses right fast. So uh, this one's interesting. If I remember correctly, these recordings all come um, from the three different DZs. So you hear them talk about Georgetown and then you hear about the flooding, which I believe is the South DZ. That's right on the river. Um, and then you only hear a little bit about the, the East DZ. Um, I believe the story of the East DZ is that there was like an explosion in the train station, which is why you notice that that part of the, of the DZ is heavily covered um, in DC 62. And then the further away you get, it's less so. But um, what, what's a few interesting tidbits is, you know, the elderly person at the beginning who talks about um, how it was interesting that they uh, were able to build the walls so quickly because it seemed like they were ready to make them. So those big concrete uh, blocks that they used to make the walls. Um, the interesting thing about uh, the the West, the like the Georgetown area, the West DZ, is that it was actually meant to keep people out. Uh, it, it was it was not it was people who weren't infected. Uh, who were trying to keep people out of that area to keep them safe and quarantine themselves, essentially, where the whole point of the other DZs and in the original DZ in Division One was to keep people in who were who were infected because it was just too chaotic for them to try to clear it out. So they just put a wall around it and tried to keep people from getting out. Uh, and that seems like kind of the idea of DZ, the, the East and South as well. Uh, so, uh, and then, you know, at the end there, that last one talks about how, uh, you know, all the rich people in Georgetown, uh, wanted the, the, the best stuff first and ended up getting DC 62 tested on them. And as we now know, DC 62 was just as toxic as the, the virus it was trying to eliminate. Uh, so that kind of backfired a bit. Um, and then, you know, there's a bunch of talk from JTF soldiers who kind of feel like this is all going too far. They don't really know what they're doing. Um, and I think in a lot of military situations uh, or in other situations in the past, uh, that's kind of playing on how, you know, just because you're following orders doesn't always mean you're doing the right thing and uh, kind of playing off of that talk. Um, I don't really think this suggests anything significant about the future of the game or anything like that. Uh, this is one that seems to just be kind of giving a, a snapshot of what was happening before I mean, we arrive and before we all get there. I think the whole DC 62 thing is interesting through other parts of the game. We've kind of found that um, it basically wasn't tested and it seems like it was uh, kind of a big farce on its own. And maybe there were even some uh, less than good intentions on testing it and that maybe it was never really meant to prevent anything. And um, I think that's, you know, kind of like a interesting little kind of, you know, underlying uh, subtext there. So, you know, I don't really think there's much more to say about that. You know, the DZ and actual discussion of the DZ as it comes to the game is it's a whole different deal. I don't think this really addresses that at all or why it makes sense that we all kill each other in there. But uh, sometimes you just have to suspend uh, disbelief, I guess. Uh, but yeah, so if you want to follow me on Twitter is Bond Diesel. Uh, I do stream a few times a week on Twitch uh, as Bond Diesel. It's twitch.tv slash Bond Diesel or bondiesel.live. You can also check out my Division 2 podcast. talks about news, updates, all that good stuff. It is called The Echo Cast, and it's on all major podcasting platforms, uh, such as iTunes and Spotify and literally every other one. I think it's on like 14 of them right now. So that's why I have this time. And uh, until next time.